Hello all. Welcome to this video on distributed computing. Today I'll be talking about Chandy Lambert snapshot algorithm. Now a global snapshot is a global state. Each distributed application has a number of processes or leaders running on a number of physical servers. These processes communicate with each other via channels by messaging. A snapshot captures the local states of each processes, for example their program variables, along with the state of each communication channel. Now let us see why we need snapshots. Snapshots can be used for checkpointing, that is we can restart if the application fails. It can also be used for collecting garbage, that is to remove objects that do not have any reference. It can also be used for detecting deadlocks so that we can examine the current application state. It can also be used for debugging. Now we will look into an example of the global snapshot. So here we have two processes P1 and P2. And we also say that there are two channels C12 from P1 to P2 and C21 from P2 to P1. And these are the process states for P1 and P2. There are also channel states for C12 and C21. Currently it's empty because no messages are being sent. So this can be called as the initial global state. Since global state is also the global snapshot, this is the initial global snapshot. Now suppose that P1 wants to tell P2 to change the state of X2 from 1 to 4. What it does is, it will send a message like this. So this is another global snapshot. Now here, P2 has received the message from P1 which is stated here. So this is another global snapshot. Then P2 is actually changing the value of x2 to 4. So this is another global snapshot. So a global state can change whenever an event happens. For example, when a process sends a message or when a process receives a message or even when a process takes a step. So moving from state to state will obey the property of casualty which is also the casual precedence relation. We will now look into the consistent global state. So a global state is a consistent global state if it satisfies the following two conditions. C1 is the law of conservation of messages, which means that each message Mij that is recorded as sent in the local state of a process Pi must be captured in the state of the channel Cij or in the collected local state of the receiver process Pj. And condition C2 states that in the collected global state, for every effect, its cause must be present. For example, if the message Mij is not recorded as sent in the local state of Pi, then it must neither be present in the state of the channel Cij or in the collected local state of the receiver process Pj. In a consistent global state, Every message that is recorded as received is also recorded as sent. Such a global state captures the notion of casualty that a message cannot be received if it was not sent. Consistent global states are meaningful global states and inconsistent global states are not meaningful in the sense that a distributed system can never be in an inconsistent state. Now we look into the issues in recording a global state. If a global physical clock were available, then the following simple procedure could be used to record a consistent global snapshot of a distributed system. So in this, the initiator of the snapshot collection decides a future time at which a snapshot is to be taken and broadcast this time to every process. All processes take their local snapshot 
at that instant in the global type. Now the snapshot of channel CIJ will include all the messages that the process PJ receives after taking the snapshot and whose timestamp is smaller than the time of the snapshot. All messages are timestamped with the sender's clock. Clearly, if messages are not FIFO, a termination detection scheme will be needed to determine when to stop waiting for messages on channels. However, a global physical clock is not available in a distributed system. Now the following two issues need to be addressed in recording of a consistent global snapshot of a distributed system. First one is how to distinguish between the messages to be recorded in the snapshot that is either in a channel state or a process state from those not to be recorded. So the answer to this will come from the condition C1 and C2 we saw before that any message that is sent by a process before recording its snapshot must be recorded in the global snapshot. This is from C1. And also, the second condition is any message that is sent by a process after recording its snapshot must not be recorded in the global snapshot, which comes from C2. Now, there is also a second problem here, which is how to determine the instant when a process takes its snapshot. So the answer to this will also come from the condition C2 where it states that a process PJ must record its snapshot before processing a message MIJ that was sent by process PI after recording its snapshot. Now we will look into the Chandi Lambert algorithm. So this algorithm was given by Leslie Lambert and K. Mani Chandi in 1985. So the problem they were trying to solve was to record a global snapshot. So it will include the state for each process and channel. Now the model they created was a set of n processes in the system with no failures and there are two FIFO unidirection channels between any process pair so that is PI to PJ and PJ to PI. All messages arrive intact without any duplication. Now looking into the system requirements needed. So taking a snapshot should never interfere with the normal application behavior. That means it should not stop the sending messages or the application. Each process can record its own state and the collect state will be done in a distributed manner and any process can initiate a snapshot. Now we'll see how to initiate a snapshot. Let us say the process PI initiates the snapshot. So PI will record its on state and prepare a special marker message that is distinct from an, any other application message. Then it will send the marker message to all the other processes using the n-1 outbound channels. And also it will start recording all the incoming messages from channels CJI where J is not equal to I. Now we look into how to propagate a snapshot. So for all the processes including the initiator, consider a message on the channel C, K, J. So if the process is seeing the marker message for the first time, the process PJ should record its on state and mark the channel C, K, J as empty. Then it should send the marker message to all the other processes using the N-1 outbound channels. It should also start recording all incoming messages from channels C, L, J where L is not equal to J or K. If it is not receiving the marker message for the first time, then it should add all messages from the inbound channels since it has already begun recording its state. Now to terminate a snapshot, all processes should have received a marker and it should all have recorded their own state. 
all the processes should have received a marker on all the n minus 1 incoming channels and recorded the state of those channels. Later, a central server can gather the partial state to build a global snapshot. Now, let us look into an example of the algorithm, a demonstration of the same on how it is working. So, here we have two processes P1 and P2. This is the example we used before. This will be the process states and the channel states. Currently, channel states are empty. And we say that P1 is initiating a snapshot. So, after that, it will need to record its own state. Then what it does is, it will send a marker message to P2 and also it will begin recording all the messages on the inbound channel. P2 will also send a message to P1. So this is the marker message sent by P1 to P2 and this is the message sent from P2 to P1. Next, P2 will receive a marker message for the first time. That is what happened here. So, it will record its own state. So, the receiving is shown by writing the marker message over the process. P2 will also send a marker message back to P1. That is given here. Then what happens is, P1 has already sent a marker message to P2. So, it will record all the messages it received on the inbound channels to the appropriate channel state. So the message sent by P2 to P1 is recorded here that is written under P1. And now both the processes have recorded their states and the state of the incoming channel. So these are the final process states and the channel states. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.